Lesson two: New Kingdoms of Cush. You are there. It is 700 BC, and you are proud to be a Cushite living in a beautiful and busy city. New temples and palaces rise toward the sky. Groups of small pyramids dot the land. Everywhere you walk, traders are busy exchanging goods. Visitors from Egypt buy grains, cotton, and cattle. Those from farther south in Africa buy products made of iron. In exchange, Cushite traders accept exotic animals, glassware, and statues of Egyptian gods. Cush conquers Egypt. By 800 BC, the kingdom of Cush had begun to regain its strength. The Cushites built a new capital city called Napata, farther south on the Nile, where they were free of Egypt's rule. In 780 BC, a Nubian chieftain named Alara started a new dynasty of Cushite kings. This began what some historians call the time of the kingdom of Napata. King Kashta followed his brother Alara as Cush's leader. Kashta kept a careful watch on the weakened Egypt. In about 750 BC, Cush captured Upper Egypt. Later, Kashta's son Pie or Pianki conquered Lower Egypt. Pie's conquest brought all of Egypt under Cushite control. After Pie's death, his brother Shabaka claimed the Egyptian pharaoh's throne. He and the Cushite pharaohs who followed him ruled as Egypt's dynasty 25. Or the Cushite Dynasty. Perhaps the most successful of all the Dynasty 25 pharaohs was Taharqa. Pharaoh Taharqa is remembered for the temples he ordered built. The Cushite pharaohs ruled Egypt from about 730 BC to 671 BC, and helped restore Egypt to its former glory. They rebuilt temples that had been destroyed and built new ones. A new beginning. The Cushites' rule over Egypt came to an end when the Assyrians invaded Egypt. Cushite and Egyptian soldiers could not compete with the large Assyrian army. When the Assyrians destroyed the combined Cushite and Egyptian armies, Taharqa and his Cushite army retreated to Napata. King Taharqa died in Napata. Soon after, the Assyrian rulers of Egypt robbed and plundered Napata. The Assyrian attack on Egypt proved to be a major setback for the Cushites. However, the Cushites learned new techniques about iron making from the Assyrians. Cushite skill in iron making would help them build a new kingdom. In 591 BC, Cushite leaders moved their capital south to Meroe, near the sixth cataract of the Nile River. There, farther from Egypt. The Cushites once again rebuilt the kingdom of Cush, also known as the Kingdom of Meroe. At Meroe, the Cush civilization lived on and made many advances. This time of achievement, which lasted from 270 BC to AD 350, is known as the Mariotic Period. During the Mariotic Period, Cush included most of Nubia as well as regions far south of Khartoum. Across the kingdom. The Cushites built temples to their own gods, as well as palaces and pyramids for their rulers. They also created new customs of their own. As in earlier times, the Cushites became known for trade. The city of Meroe. One of Meroe's greatest advantages was its location. The city was not only on the Nile River, but also at the meeting point of several overland trade routes. In Meroe, Cushite merchants revived their trade network or group of buyers and sellers. Using caravans of camels, traders from southwestern Asia and from other parts of Africa traveled to Meroe. Along with gold, cattle, cotton, and wheat, the Cushites began to offer iron products to their trade partners. The need to keep trade records led the people of Meroe to create the first Nubian written language. Before this time, the Nubian language was only spoken, and any written communication used Egyptian hieroglyphs. The new Mariotic alphabet had 23 symbols, 
which stood for sounds in the Nubian language. Today, the sounds of the symbols are known, but no one has been able to decipher or figure out the meaning of the language. Because of its success at trade, the city of Meroe grew. Soon, new palaces, temples, pyramids, and iron working shops arose. With just one look at the city, a visitor could tell that the people of Meroe were wealthy. Trade brought the Kushites much wealth, but its rulers gave Meroe its strength. Just as the pharaohs of Dynasty 25 had claimed to be sons of the god Amun, so too did the leaders of Meroe. In some ways, the rulers of Meroe were very different from Egyptian rulers. In Meroe, women played an important role in governing. In fact, many historians believe that the right to rule was passed on through the queen, not the king. Women could also be rulers themselves, and many were. These powerful queens are even known to have led troops into battle. For example, Amani Shakete led her army against the mighty Roman army. The Fall of Meroe During the 200s BC, Greek rulers in Egypt had ordered ports built on the Red Sea. Traders began to use sea routes rather than the land routes that passed through the once busy city of Meroe. No longer a center of trade, Meroe lost much of its power, importance, and wealth. Also, soldiers from the African kingdom of Aksum, in what is now Ethiopia, began making raids on Kushite towns. By about AD 350, the people of Aksum had defeated the Kushites. The king of Aksum wrote, I burned their villages, both those with walls of stone and those of straw. By the end of the 4th century AD, the Kush civilization had fallen.